What is up ladies and gents, my name is Malcolm, also known as Beta, and I'm here to tell you guys my top 10 games of 2020. Ooh, spooky. I don't know why I do that. I do that all the time. I don't know why. I have fun. I, I, I guess I do. I mean, it's not a spooky time of the year. I mean, we just passed October, Halloween time. And I guess the end of the year is kind of a spooky time. Anyways, let me let me just freaking do my thing, jump into my thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, basically how I'm judging or how I came up with my top 10 list is basically, uh, let me say basically one time basically i took the my top the top games that i thought about the most that had not the biggest impact on me the most but i mean a lot a lot of the games on this list had a big impact on me not like emotional some emotion but like the the, the ones that i can't stop thinking about the most for 2020 overall how i how much i enjoy the game from the story the characters the music the game design the world the feeling like all of that good jazz and we're gonna have some honorable missions uh missions that's in missions i'm actually saying I meant to say mentions, so sorry about that. So yeah, this is the only this is the second time I've done this. I did a top ten uh, games of 2019. A lot of you all enjoyed that, so much appreciated. I'm doing the game this year, and um, yeah. So hopefully you guys enjoy it this time around. Um, again, this is my second time doing this, so sorry if I'm stumbling upon my words, not getting my point across and whatnot. And just letting you guys know, I don't have a script to this video. I'm literally just looking at my freaking idle screen on my TV of Black Ops Cold War while just talking to you guys. I'm thinking of my feelings and emotions on these games that I put on my top 10 list for 2020. So yeah, um, so yeah, sorry in advance if I'm not making any sense. So with all that being said, before we get started with this video, ladies and gents, if you guys can please leave a like on this video, if you guys like what you saw, please subscribe for more content and help about the channel a lot. Also, when you do subscribe, make sure you click that little bell next to the subscribe button so you can start receiving notifications when I post videos or go live with the live stream next time. Um, please share my channel and my videos to all your friends family cats and dogs and whoever who nuts and you guys can all follow me on twitter at beta b a y t u h if you want to support me even further than just subscribe to my youtube channel leave a like share my channel my videos to all your friends and families and maybe your cats and dogs and whoever who nuts um please consider donating some of your extra monies you have lying around to my patreon and or paypal that is patreon.com slash beta b a y t u h and or paypal.me slash beta b a y t u h you do not have to do either of those that's 100% optional, but please note, ladies and gents, any and all donations are much appreciated. And with all that being said, without further ado, let's get started. Do not mourn. Do not doubt. Your actions in Eden were tragic, but necessary. Eden was intended for humanity, not the Nephilim. It was a great victory for the balance. For you, horseman. Victory. Number 10 on my list, Darksiders Genesis. Now, I know you guys are probably thinking, wait, didn't Darksiders Genesis come out in 2019? That is true. Originally on PC, I think Stadia, but it's just like, I'm mainly a console player. I mean, Xbox One is my console of choice, right? The Xbox console is my console of choice, then PlayStation. And I don't have like a good enough PC to play, you know, PC games or record PC games. And I don't have Stadia either, which I don't think many people have. Boom, I slide against Stadia. Man, I'm a freaking Twitter user right now. Um, but yeah, uh, so I'm putting Dark Side's Genesis on this list, and let me just say, I am baffled by how I'm surprised, which kind of means the same thing, sorry, uh, how good Dark Side's Genesis is. Because I remember when they announced that, hey, we're going to do a Dark Side's game, it's going to be in the style of Diablo. I'm like, I don't know about that, because if I'm not mistaken, uh, ladies and gents, that uh, Dark Side's 1 and 2 were more of the style of Zelda, which I thought it worked pretty well for that. Uh, per, uh, for Dark Souls 1 and 2, more mature Zelda, and Dark Souls 3 uh, was more of like Soulsborne type of uh, 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 gameplay style, which it surprisingly works. So I'm like, eh, I don't know about this. And actually seeing footage, seeing the glowing reviews it got, and actually playing it for myself, I'm like, wow, I am surprised. I would even go as far as say that I think that I I think Dark Souls works best as this type of game. Like I can imagine, and I know I should probably get to this later and how I feel about this game, but 
I honestly think that whenever they make a Dark Souls 4, it maybe has uh, has war, strife, fury, and death in it. Like I think it it will work playing as all four of them, it, four player co-op. Like man, I think this style fits perfectly well. I think the story fits well, uh, perfectly well as well, or perfectly great as well. And the Dark Souls universe, because if I'm not mistaken, this takes place before Dark Souls one, two, and three. Like this is well Genesis the beginning so i guess that makes sense see lucifer and all his misdeeds what he's doing through the story you get a sense of where war is coming from his his personality and whatnot like sure yeah we all know he is like the stubborn hard ass don't give a shit will freaking murder you if you get in his way type of guy but you're starting to see where he's coming from plus we play as my man strife being the old, the jokey jokey brother of the the horseman of the apocalypse which we see many times war get really pissed off of strife it's just he it's so good it's actually pretty fu funny and charming like these characters are really well written and really great the gameplay like i said diablo style i do like the, the how differently war and strife feel strive long range use him for combat plus he can do some up close and personal stuff but he of course he specializes in long range and plus like i said war he specializes in doing that blunt force don't give a shit will destroy you if he if you get in his way in close quarter combat really fits well um the music really great my favorite song in this game is definitely when you face against part of you guys are hearing it in the background right now but when you face that one fallen angel woman like god that that song when she's riding on the horse really freaking well and oh my god the boss fight was pretty darn hard um i would say my biggest complaint about this game is that it, there's no like scenery there's not many scenery in this game that i'm like you know what this is really freaking awesome and beautiful it's 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 whatever and you know uh, when you go into the dungeons and whatnot it can get really repetitive because it is mostly kill quests and, and all that stuff but yeah ladies and gents overall dark siders genesis is number 10 on my list and i really do highly recommend you guys all play you guys and gals play this game it's really freaking good so yeah dark siders genesis number 10 on my list Number nine on my list, Neo 2. Now, a couple years ago, even, yeah, I would say a couple years ago, ladies and gentlemen, if you said Malcolm, I mean, I meant to say Beta, sorry, you guys can't really know my real name. Beta, <laughs> Beta, you're gonna be loving the Soulsborne like games. I'm like, eh, I'll, I would be like, nah, my, the gameplay seems clunky and not my style, and so difficult and whatnot, and blah, 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 I'm just coming up with excuses. But I do love the aesthetic, I've always loved the aesthetic of the Soulsborne games. I mean, what, Dark Souls, High Fantasy, Medieval Times, I freaking love love that um bloodborne victorian london with magic and all that other stuff that i love in high fantasy stuff Sekiro, which i did love is one of my favorite games of all time and my third favorite game of 2019 i'm like samurai ninjas okay and neo coming back to neo and neo 2 i'm like all right like the feudal japan samurai and all that stuff i'm like that is really up my alley but i couldn't get past the gameplay and whatnot but i'm like you know what shut up set up play the game outcome like let's freaking do this and you know what praise the sun the freaking sun has won ladies and gents it has one i am now in love with this genre i did like get up to eight bosses to in neo one and god i freaking umu bows a fight where i kicked my butt uh, but coming back to neo two i'm like okay it's more the same what i remember from neo one um with added uh with some added gameplay elements which really does set it apart for the for the most far uh most fart most part for uh from neo one definitely with your yokai shift and your burst counters and whatnot which really adds a lot of versatility uh, versatility 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 to your gameplay style and your builds and whatnot. And I want to give a huge special shout out to Fex Extra Life, uh, the fine folks over there, and the big homie Fighting Cowboy. If it wasn't for them, I probably would not have beaten this game. So thank you to their to their build guides. Really helped me out. So yeah, shout out to them, those fine folks. Um, so yeah, coming back to Neo 2, I'm like, okay, I do have some negatives to uh, about the game, and let's just get that out of the way. The biggest negative I would say is the repetitive mission structure and the and the level design. That's the same problem that Neo one had and i wish team ninja the developers the developers between excuse me the developers behind uh neo one and neo two 
actually made some really cool levels to explore. And I would say there's about like three, two or three levels that I'm like, all right, this is actually really unique and cool. It will be the final level be before you feed before you beat the final boss and this one level where you fight the fire yokai boss and select the upside down castle like i thought that was pretty well done but other than that you're going through the same village and the same temples and whatnot and you're killing the boss and it's just like it's a rinse and repeat thing but boy the gameplay is so fun it's probably my favorite type of soulsborne like gameplay style it's so fun really fast very reactive base which i really like i know a lot of people are like oh it's like ninja guy I'm like nope oh, ninja guy it's a lot faster but this is like an in between of like a little bit faster i would say a little bit faster than god of war 2018 um talk about the yokai ships for a second i do like that they do bring in a whole new gameplay element at first i chose the brute i'm like okay let me stand still hit the dude before he uh, burst count him uh, uh before he comes up in my way and or before he hits me and do a cool attack to take him out or do a lot of damage to his health which is really cool but then i started watching videos on youtube YouTube of people using the Pharaoh and the Phantom to do dodges. I'm like, huh, that's actually very freaking interesting. And I switched to the Pharaoh Guardian Spirit, I think, or the Pharaoh Yokai shift. Yeah, the Pharaoh Yokai. I'm like, oh, this adds another element. Sure, it takes away your your Yokai shift ability meter or whatever, that purple gauge, but it adds another dodge option just in case you need to hurry up and dodge out of the way if you if you're out of stamina or you know, quick dodge and all that versatility. It's really, really, really really freaking awesome maybe it kind of breaks the game just a little bit but overall man what a really, really what an awesome game story-wise it's really cool um, i like it that it's a prequel to neo one up until the point where your character falls asleep and you wake up and you got my boy and his whole his freaking badass mother epi the music that you have to fight him the main character from the first game i'm like oh my goodness this is freaking awesome man um unfortunately i never got to play the dlcs on neo 2 but i might jump in that in, to, uh, in 2021 2021 sorry my mind went blank right there so yeah ladies and gents neo 2 is number nine on my list and man ah, i can't wait to play some more souls board games i do have dark souls excuse me demon souls remake loaded up on my ps5 that'll be my second walkthrough of 2021 somewhere like probably after my first walkthrough so that'll be the week after um the the second week of january so yeah neo 2 number nine on my list and with that Hermes disappeared. Phoenix gazed across the narrow band of sea at the peaks and valleys of the Golden Isle ahead. The long path to her true destiny lay stretched out before her. Wait, that was just a prologue? How does it take someone that long to begin a story? Odysseus made it home faster. She's about to jump. Be quiet and listen. Number eight on my list, Immortals Phoenix Rising, even though it used to be called Gods and Monsters. But let's call a spade a spade, ladies and gents. A spade a joker. Gods and Monsters, way better name. Immortals Phoenix Rising, sure, it has the main character's name in it, but you know, it's Gods and Monsters, such a better name, but that's neither here or there right now, ladies and gents. What's there and here and here right now, and there back again, of course, that's a Hobbit reference, or that's a Lord of Rings reference. Anyways, um, Immortals Phoenix Rising, a freaking great game. Like, um, overall, in my personal opinion, I think Immortals Phoenix Phoenix Rising. I'm just going to say Phoenix Rising. If Phoenix Rising is Ubisoft's best new IP that they put out this generation. Like, it's better than Watch Dogs. I personally think it's better than all the Far Cry games that they put out. I think it's better than most of the Assassin's Creed games they put out. I think it's better than Rainbow Six Siege. It's just, what a fun not take yourself too seriously game. It's such a great light-hearted game that I definitely need it in 2020. It's just, I know it takes heavy inspiration from Zelda Breath of the Wild to the, to the point where people People are like, ah, this is such a scam and whatnot. It's such a ripoff. I'm like, eh, like I personally never played Breath of the Wild. I mean, the last Zelda game I've played was uh, Wind Waker, which we all agree that's the best Zelda game, but that's neither here or there right now as well. But, <laughs> but yeah, Amor's Fiends Rising, pretty, pretty freaking great. Like, the story is, you know, it is kind of like a Zelda story. Hey, freaking, you have to save all the gods of this, of, of the, of Greek mythology, so you can, so they can help you beat freaking uh, Ganon and whatnot, but his name is Ty 
safe in this game uh you have to help them out uh the characters the gods are actually pretty funny i mean you have aphrodite who just wants to bang all the time you have Ares, the god of war who just wants to bang aphrodite and you have freaking god the guy who makes the the, the giant hammer who's not thor but he he's busy making all the armors and the automatons in this world he's freaking getting cuckolded from aphrodite and air in the Ares. i'm just like huh and zeus is a freaking dirt bag of a dad like always in all the mediums that he's been interpreted in and just like oh okay there's a lot of freaking sex jokes and all this stuff in the game it's sure a lot of it can be heavy heavy handed and too much but other times i feel like it it hits more than it misses the jokes and the and the, and the comedic timings in this game i think it hits more than it misses which is really freaking cool uh phoenix and you know phoenix is a fine character well not just a blank slate like doing the right thing type of your average joe or jane but the gameplay like people say it does take heavy inspiration from breath of the wild and like i said i haven't played a zelda game since the best zelda game zelda wind waker but i do like how, fa how fast and fluid it is i mean it's like it's my type uh, favorite type of third person hack and slash game where it's super fast you can dodge get out the way it's input based instead of chip based damage it's really fun uh, the bosses are really fun even though most of them are a little repetitive because they are like bigger versions of mini bosses that you face throughout the world but you know i give them a little pass there the world fun and engaging it's not like there's many side quests that matter or big side quests that's just like oh my goodness but it's really fun and interesting i mean i poured 25 hours i think 20 25 hours into the game which it can only take you like t 8 to 12 hours to beat the game but this it, and more uh, phoenix rising does a great job to get to, to incentivize you sorry if i'm saying that wrong to go out and do challenges do these go uh, these gates of tartaruses so a volta tartaruses so you can get zeus's light balls to upgrade your stamina or find these amber roses or whatever they're called these little crystals so they can upgrade your health like it does a great job making you or wanting you to go do these things and i felt compelled to do it because man gameplay is fun it's enjoyable the characters are all likable and whatnot and yeah what a cool world uh i'm hopefully fingers crossed that we do get a phoenix rising 2 we can probably explore different mythologies and whatnot as phoenix or or another character phoenix 2.0 or whatever you want to call uh call them so yeah and most phoenix rising lace gents number oh i was about to say number nine number eight on my list usually you only point out that i'm small-minded no well yes but i mean you're just so big the nipple on your breastplate is the size of my head. Oh, I thought you meant... Seriously, you could serve a three-course meal on that thing. Why do gods even have nipples? I don't know what happened. I'm supposed to take her to the fireflies and walk away. Number seven on my list, ladies and gents, the most controversial game of 2020 for a few months, The Last of Us Part 2. Now, overall, let me just say, ladies and gents, or let me just say, get this out of the way first, that to the people who send all those threats and death threats to the voice actress and the actress, Laura Bailey, uh, who played a uh, Abby, and the developers behind this game, Naughty Dog, Neil Druckmann, all those fine folks, could go fuck off into oblivion. We all have opinions on this game, but, you know, there's a thing of taking things too far for a freaking video game, and none of that, none, none Nothing in this game calls for anything of those of that type of behavior. So yeah, you guys can go fuck off into oblivion. Now, going back to my feelings on Last of Us Part 2 and my overall thoughts. Overall, I think it's a great game. Like, I do have problems with the story and how in the way it was told, but yeah, I I really did enjoy it. From gameplay part, uh, uh let me get some of the positives out of the way, then we jump to the negatives. Uh the positives, I do like the gameplay. I think it was a step up from the Last of Us Part 1 and other Naughty Dog games. Um, even though I never played Last of Us Part 1. I did watch the cutscenes. I do understand the father-daughter relationship between Joel and Ellie, but I did also watch gameplay walkthroughs and gameplay of it, and I know that it's a definitely step up gameplay-wise and movement-wise movement, movement -wise, uh, from Last of Us Part 1, because I know I I see that it feels a lot more, you're a lot more versatile, and you're a lot more fast and fluid in Part 2, which I, which I really did like. Um, I also really did like the characters and the new characters in Last of Us Part 2. I really do like Ellie, 
Bailey, I really do like um, Abby. I mean, Abby, I, I'm freaking Lori Bailey, freaking knocked it out of the park. She nailed that role, freaking awesome. I love her character dynamic and, and her growth and, and all that good jazz and her her dynamic between um, her and Lev and uh, their sister Yara. I think that's her name, and the other characters like Owen and and Manny and God, I forgot the other guy. I mean, the woman's name, uh, Owen's. Uh, she he knocked her up. The pregnant woman and the and the wolf militia organization or whatnot i do like the back and forth that ellie has with da uh, dana or dina dina i think dina the woman she she likes i do like her back and forth with joel how she was passive aggressive towards him but that was flashback stuff and also um god that the other guy that uh that dina got knocked up god i totally i totally forgot their name um but yeah i really do like their back and forth as well um i honestly do like how ellie didn't like i love her characterization through the game of like going too far and to get vengeance like a perfect example is when you're walking through it was walking you were walking through a house with dina and you come across some bodies and you notice that they've been brutal they've been brutal uh very brutally tortured and i think uh, ellie notes that uh this seems like tommy's work like she says that to dina like this is tommy's work like he goes this far to get people to answer uh to give them uh, to give him what he wants and you see that later in the game when uh ellie had to do that to god i forgot abby's friend it's the black woman when she, ellie has to sneak through the camera her name's nora i think i think it's nora yeah sorry i'm blank on her name but yeah we towards the end of that mission you see um nora not wanting to give ellie answers and ellie had to torture her like brutalize her and when you get back to the theater to dina dina's like what's wrong and ellie's like i had to do it like i had to make her talk i'm like oh my gosh like man you really knocked out of the part with that i really do like I, I really do love that part so yeah the characters in this game are really freaking awesome i really do love that the things i don't like about this game ladies and gents is the story part story parts of it like i do think the beginning of the game when you play as ellie is really great I, the middle part i'm like uh, because it feels it feels like a giant side quest but then when, we, when you switch back to ellie towards the end of the game i'm like all right this is awesome again and what i mean by that is after I, I felt like the story was told backwards. Like I thought you should have started the game as Abby trying to find her dad, and her dad is helping a zebra out barbed wire thing. And Owen comes along and helps that. And Owen's like, "Hey, the girls here, whatnot, Doctor, we need you, whatnot." Then we jump cut to Abby going through the hospital. She already seen the death and carnage that Joel left in the wake, trying to find Ellie. I'm like, oh, "Okay, this is awesome." And when you when Abby gets to the room, she's like, "Oh God, Jesus! Like my dad's dead and whatnot." Oh no. Um, then that's what gets her on the path of vengeance and all that stuff. I'm like, okay, that's cool. But the beginning of the game starts you as Joel telling Tommy the things he done. Then we see, you know, later, we, uh, later, like a few hours later, we see that, um, or no, yeah, about like an hour or so later that, you know, we see Joel and Abby, uh, Abby is about to kill uh, Joel in front of Ellie. And of course the player wants to left, uh, leave, uh, not left. Yeah, I guess left hating Abby, but we don't know why why because that cutscene i talked about with abby doesn't happen until like 12 hours into the game it's just like ah uh, like i kind of wish we would have had that plus i would you left wondering wait how does abby know who joel is and joel and tommy is like how do they how does she know their location it was a throwaway line into another flashback scene ladies and gentlemen that's like 15 hours to the game where it's abby and owen into the aquarium uh and abby's like oh yeah i got permission by someone I totally forgot his name, the leader of Wolf or whatever. I got permission to take a leave of absence to hunt this guy down and take revenge. Uh, his name is his name is Joel. I know where to find him. He's in Washington. I think that's the state that we're in. I'm like, okay, that's 15 hours into the game, and I'm not gonna lie to you guys, ladies and gents. Like, I totally like I missed that line. I had to go back and rewatch some of my videos to figure out, like, how does she figure out where these where Joel is? Like, it never made sense to me. Even after playing that part, I'm like, I it just totally went over my head because i thought it was so underhanded and not like such a big thing but i'm like it is such a huge thing because you're left wondering how did she figure all this crap out and another thing i really don't like about the story is i felt the middle part with of abby and lev like i said i love their characters the characters interaction between abby lev and yara i it felt like that whole entire thing helping those kids out bringing them back to the cultist island or whatnot 
whatnot. And that felt like a giant ass side quest because while you're doing that, Ellie, uh, while you're fucking off doing that, Ellie is hunting your friends down and trying to get answers out of them to find where you're at. And you're basically cut off, be deserted and out of the loop of what the heck is going on until the very last part where, uh, where you go back to the aquarium, aquarium and you find your friends and the guy you like dead. And it's just like, uh, I just, I, they, like, it was a cool part doing the Yara and, and Lev stuff, but I just felt like it should have been, you know, that, 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 I mean, that just felt like a total side story, side quest and whatnot. But yeah, ladies and gents, those are my problems uh, that I have with Last of Us Part 2. But like I said, overall, I think it is a really great game. So yeah, Last of Us Part 2, number seven on my list. <laughs> Wake the fuck up, samurai. We have a city to burn. Chip, 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 I'm chipping in. My name's Keanu Reeves, and I'm chipping in. Number six on my list, ladies and gents, uh, the other most controversial game of 2020, Cyberpunk 2077. Now, overall, I do think it's a great game that's including, like, like an 8.5, and that's including, including all the technical issues, bugs, and glitches, and whatnot. But let's just say this game is actually a lot more polished and didn't have so many of those bug problems and whatnot. I, I think this game would definitely be a, a 9.0, an amazing game. 9.5, eh. That, that's being a little bit generous too generous i was saying a good 9 of 9.0 amazing game but um unfortunately it, like you know despite technical issues i just unfortunately this game never reaches those highs of witcher 3 wild hunt which is cd project red's previous title and it's my favorite game of all time i mean i put over 500 hours into that game beat the game six times each of the expansions three times and it just never reaches those highs narrative wise and rpg and decision and deci uh, de decision excuse me decision making and all that stuff that affect the actual world of cyberpunk like none of that really is in the game which is very unfortunate and a perfect example is the bloody baron and the witches of crookback bog uh crookback bog yeah uh, uh quest chain where if you you take the mission from the witches and you either have to kill the tree spirit or or free the tree spirit and wherever you choose there has consequences to you coming back choosing if you want to to come back to the crookback bog with the bloody baron to help him out to find his wife anna which the witches have but your choices with the tree spirit uh de like has big consequences on that and influence on that quest and it has huge consequences on uh the bloody baron and the world of the witcher 3 it has consequences for velen i'm like dude that is super cool cyberpunk really doesn't have that which is unfortunate and like witcher 3 has like abc or abcd choices with some twists and turns and whatnot cyberpunk doesn't have that it's mostly a b choices it's either hey uh for example is the ju uh you do a quest for judy where you have to kill tiger ball uh tiger boss uh tiger claws bosses or or uh if she she invites her friend along to help you out with the mission and her friend throws you an audible and so she could take over tiger claws and you have to choose it between the two and i decide to choose to with her friend and in doing so judy's like well since you did this i'm paraphrasing uh since that one woman she took over did not to really change uh, for the better at, uh, at clouds but if you chose to kill the bosses the tiger claws retaliate against you or retaliate retaliate against clouds and things go poorly for clouds but it really it's not like world changing for in the world of night city in cyberpunk 2077 like you are not in a bad favor with with the tiger claws or any any other gang it's just like huh that's really disappointing like i wish like like what like the fixer wakako i think she's she's affiliated with the tiger claws that'd be cool if you did a huge favor for her do a big side quest for her and she owes you a favor she's like v you know call me if you need anything help i got your back and if you call her during that tiger claws mission or the judy mission she could probably help you you know help you with the tiger claws situation i don't know like something like that and just cyberpunk really never goes down that way goes deeper with the narrative it's also surface
surface level with the decision making that affects Night City. So that's that sucks. But uh, going jumping to the positives, I really do like the gameplay of this game. Even though I beat the game at a level 43 and I just one shot people like like what I was a level 30 like 30 hours of the game. I beat the game around 90 hours and the game was super easy for me on normal difficulty. I start to one to four shot people. This game definitely needs I'm blank on the name the term, but it definitely needs like level scaling. Yeah, it needs level scaling so the enemies could you know not a uh, see us uh, you know to be greater higher ranking than me, but have a lot more parity so I don't freaking wipe the floor with them in like one or two shots. Um, another positive of this game, ladies and gents. Oh uh, yeah, going back to the gameplay, I really do like the gorilla arms. Like I switched between gorilla arms and mantis blades, but I played a strong solo, so mostly gorilla arms. But another positive of this game, ladies and gents, is the side characters. Is the character of this game. I love my waifu Panam. I love Judy. She's awesome. River Ward, Carrie, and Rogue, awesome. But the best character in this game is by far Chip and Encounter Reese himself. Like Johnny Silverhand is freaking awesome. Like he's an asshole who's trying to kill you at the beginning of the game. But he's like, you know what? We're in this together. Let's just work this out and work together to solve this issue. But throughout the game, you're starting to understand where he's coming from and where this rocker boy, not persona, but his personality has come from and whatnot. And he, him actually feeling sorry that he was this way, was this asshole towards his friends uh, uh, when he was living and whatnot. And you get a really heartfelt moment towards the end of the game uh, where you're in the Oriole field. He's like, wait, this is where they buried me and whatnot? And you can, you have a heartfelt moment. You can console Johnny and be like, no, nah, man, like, you're cool. <laughs> you're cool and whatnot. I'm basically paraphrasing the lines and whatnot. I'm like, oh, man, this is really cool. Definitely Johnny's interaction with his previous friends, a Rogue and Carrie, like, oh, man, so freaking cool. Reminding me of the scene of Witcher 3 between Geralt and Letho from Witcher 2. Um, another, uh, another, I really do like V, my V, how I made my V. At, in the beginning, V was like, burn nice city to the ground. I'm a real nice city. Get all this money. But when all these things happen to his friend, Jack, him losing his best friend, uh, him getting the red shard in his head that's killing him, my V starts to look at Night City through a different lens and he's like, this isn't what I signed up for. This isn't what I want. Like, this is like high risk, low reward type stuff. And, and throughout the game, like uh, his view of things start to change a lot, which I'm like, yep, this is definitely how I would, how, how, how I would do things and how I would see things and whatnot. And basically uh, there's, there's a moment towards the end of the game that it's not, I'm not gonna spoil uh, like what happens, but there's a, a choice dialogue that Johnny Silverhand and V have, in which I think it's really poignant. It really describes Night City in the bubble. Is that uh, V is like, man, I was hoping for a happier ending for everyone. And Johnny comes along. He's like, wrong city, wrong people. It just does not happen. And yeah, that perfectly describes Night City. Like, if you want the, it, happy, happy endings that everyone wins, doesn't happen in Night City. So yeah, Cyberpunk, ladies and gents, number six on my list. I was about to say number seven, number six. Round out number five, ladies and gents, is Ghost of Tsushima. I'm actually personally surprised how much I like this game. Like, this game freaking slaps rock ass hard, ladies and gents. It is so freaking good, Ghost of Tsushima. And I've never played uh, Sucker Punch's previous games, which is infamous, if I'm not mistaken. I know a lot of people love those titles. I'm like, I'm coming into Ghost of Tsushima. I'm like, all right, like, I'm a huge fan of this samurai, this feudal Japan, like, this era. Like, I'm a huge fan of samurais, huge fans of ninjas, all this stuff. And it's just like, man, this game is really good it is really special and boy sucker punch really really just knocked it out of the part in my personal opinion and while i didn't like the main story or the main villain and some parts of the open world and some parts of the open world and you know it sucks that the side quests aren't really all that they're basically like miscellaneous whatever whatever side quests and, and all that stuff and i do think the mission uh objectives are really repetitive because there's basically going in to a camp kill some people back out bounce or going to 
to somewhere uh, rescue someone and it just bounce and whatnot like that's basically the main that's basically what you do like what 90 percent of the game but where that's i find negatives in it makes up in uh the the story makes up for it i mean not the story excuse me the gameplay makes up for it the characters makes up for it and those and the side characters and their stories that makes up for it like boy jin sakai i i love his character like i love him trying to wrestle with uh becoming the becoming uh staying the honorable samurai or becoming the dishonorable ghost of tsushima i love his back and forth with his uncle i love yuna and their back and forth and and, and her helping him out becoming the ghost of tsushima and her building up that legend of he's he is the ghost he will the savior of tsushima i really like that and i'm blanking all the rest of their names the side characters names because i'm sorry it's been a while since i played ghost of tsushima but ishikawa i think that's his bow instructor uh, his bow instructor bow instructor bow and arrow instructor's name instructor god jesus his bow teacher freaking name i like him i like his story between him and his previous student you trying to figure out was well, she this murdering murdering person and how uh th there's a uh, story conclusion and how it happens and all that stuff i love lady asako i think that's her name asakawa or asako lady asako i think her like the the the, the death and sadness that happened in her family and how you're helping her out through your journey and see the conclusion to that story i love the warrior monk hit him like him going pretty much not crazy but taking revenge for his brother it's just like oh man like the character side story really awesome the gameplay oh my goodness like i'm just like this this is basically like what assassin's creed 2 uh assassin's creed should play like like the the blocking mechanics the gameplay is so fun fun and fluid it makes me keep wanting just to go back to ghost of Tsushima and just not do anything just mess around it's freaking just and just be in combat and just play around and dick around and all that stuff it's so freaking fun like if i had to like even though i just basically got past all this stuff but basically to summarize the tld the tldr version of how i feel about ghost of tsushima ladies and gents is it's basically the assassin's creed game set in japan that ubisoft refuses to make for us with sony first party uh polish which we know is very high quality so it's just like man i mean and you know comparing to ubisoft definitely with a repetitive mission structure and whatnot but the feeling of being that samurai and definitely the like stealth sections in the assassin's creed and ghost of Tsushima are very much like basically the same and like i said the mission structure and whatnot but other than that wow like go i cannot wait for ghost of Tsushima 2 i did do a walkthrough with my buddy um assassin 4259 he's another content creator go subscribe to him uh, go subscribe to him i did do a walkthrough of ghost of Tsushima legends uh co-op the co-op ghost of Tsushima mode and boy like super fun like sucker punch with the freaking hits right here with four ghosts like bring on ghost of Tsushima 2 man i am so freaking red again you know i cannot wait to see where the story goes and where the dishonorable ghost jin sakai goes with his story and does he does he go to mainland um uh, mainland uh, uh mainland japan who knows so yeah ghost of Tsushima ladies and gents number five on my list you say you are not soldiers you are warriors we can defeat the invaders and save our home but only if we stand together Number four on my list, ladies and gents, is Spider-Man Miles Morales. Overall, I really love Spider-Man's uh, Spider-Man's Spider-Man's Miles Morales. Says, uh, overall, I really do love Spider-Man Miles Morales, ladies and gents. I think it's a better game than Spider-Man 2018, which is just like, man, like Spider-Man 2018, like it's one of the best superhero games ever. But you know, that's actually very few and far between, really, if you really think about it. Other than the Batman Arkham games, but uh, never mind that. I think it's time a game 
Games did a great job taking everything I personally loved about Spider-Man uh, 2018 and conditioning it down into a smaller story into like a full what, five, four or five hour game and I think it totally worked. Granted, it did take a lot of stuff that I didn't like from Spider-Man 2018 like the bloatiness of the side objectives which I personally feel like it's useless, useless and the countless and countless of activities that you don't have to do but I just feel like it's just fodder and whatnot and that was a huge problem I had in Spider-Man 2018 and it's a problem in Spider-Man Miles Morales but at least it makes at least the gameplay and story makes up for it I do love the personal story that Miles Morales has him becoming his own Spider-Man him not copying trying to pee Peter be Peter Parker Spider-Man being the Spider-Man the hero hero that Harlem needs and since my, uh, Peter Parker isn't there which is I think it's really cool I do like the different gameplay versatility you have versus what you had in Spider-Man 2018 his venom powers and the, his invisibility powers really work and has a lot of cool dynamics that you could do in Spider-Man Mor Miles Morales and I really do like the characters like I said Miles Morales freaking awesome I love his character like I said him trying becoming his own Spider-Man, Spider him finding himself and all that good jazz, his powers, his abilities. I do love, God, I was about to say Ned, but from but he's from Spider-Man Homecoming and he's basically that Peter Parker's Genki. I really do like Genki. He, he has some really good, 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 really good, really good comedic moments. Um, Uncle Aaron, really cool. I love his, his, um, um, his problem moments in this game. Definitely towards the end of the game, him trying to stop uh, Miles and be like, no, I can't lose anywhere else. Like him actually being a good guy, doing it for the right reasons, but you know, like did the wrong thing for the right reasons. Basically, um, I do like his love interest uh, in this game, which is God. What's her name? Ash? Not, it's not Ashley. Freaking God! It's someone. Haley. Haley. There we go. I love his love interest uh, in this game. She's pretty tight. And also Fen, the main bad guy in the game, which she is the tinkerer. Even though I don't like where her character goes at the very 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 end of the game i'm not gonna spoil it because i think they took the easy way out for her character but i do like her reasoning being uh doing all the stuff she's doing uh roxon i think that's the name of the like the one of the bad guy corporations and whatnot in this game and it's just like eh, there's whatever just some rich billionaire dude freaking the head ceo he's like the main overarching bad guy i guess if you want to call it that but eh, he's he's like whatever and i do like we see some really cool cameos in the in the game as well from from people uh, from uh, uh, from characters from Spider-Man 2018 so yeah Spider-Man Miles Morales I think it's a great follow-up and man I cannot wait to see the next Spider-Man game Spider-Man 2 I presume might be coming out in the next what in round around 2022 2023 hopefully we can play as Spire uh, we can play as Miles Morales and Peter plus with the symbiote is probably gonna be in the game too Venom oh dude like possibilities are really cool and it's cool that Spider-Man games created this world because you can definitely see going back to spider-man 2018 ladies and gents you can definitely see see the seeds planted by some games for this universe for their spider-man universe they're making with miles morales to even spider-man 2 whenever that comes out with venom and everything like i cannot wait to see who's who's next uh not who's next but i cannot wait to see uh where they go next like if we're gonna see more heroes or, like other villains pop up from uh spider-man comics and whatnot so yeah spider-man spider -Man, miles morales Number four on my list. Oh yeah, plus the music in this game so freaking dope. Miles, get out of here. Bro. Back the hell. So Cloud, you were a soldier first class, right? Yeah. Weird. Really? What's weird about it? Nothing. Just that you were the same rank. Huh? As who? The first guy I ever loved.
Number three on my list, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Now, I really had no, I mean, no lineage to Final Fantasy, I mean, let alone Final Fantasy VII. I mean, I know the the, the legend of this game, like, it's, it's one of the most beloved games of all time. A lot of people love this game. And me coming into Final Fantasy VII for the first time through fresh eyes, because the only other type of Final Fantasy VII type game I played was Dirge of Cerberus back on the PS1, I think, but even I really don't remember much about what I played back then. All I know was the dude had a cool coat and the freaking gun with three barrels. I pistol with three barrels. I'm like, oh yeah, what a hard rocking mother effer. But coming back to Final Fantasy VII Remake, ladies and gents, I freaking love this game. Like, pleasantly, like, what a treat. Like, goodness gracious, the music is very beautiful. The battle music is awesome. I mean, I do have some issues here and there with the padding throughout the story of you going through the underground dungeons and you doing these mini games. I'm like, all right, like, we don't have to freaking and do all this stuff like i think that's a that's like whatever whatever but the story is really freaking cool even though i do know what happens with you know not with the remake final phase etc but i do know what happens you know to the characters or whatever whatever the story of final phase 7 but i do really like the characters they can't play the the can't play the gameplay i do like but i don't love and my biggest problem with it is that i was trying to play final phase 7 remake like final phase 15 or kingdom hearts 3 or any other type of third person hack and slash game that does input damage like you know that type of hack and slash game like guy war like final fantasy 15 or kingdom hearts 3 but in reality the gameplay in final fantasy 7 remake is more in line of a modernized version of like old school final fantasy old school jrpg games it's more chip based damage basically you have to use uh use every weapon every tool in your arsenal to take down the enemy like oh this enemy is weak against this weapon and this mana mana right or is it mantra mana magic and whatever i can use this i was about to say colossus this god or whatever kind of celestial whatever they're freaking called they're that they're, oh god i totally forgot the term let's just call it celestial because i really do like that that they I'm a freaking celestial being from One Piece. Have they even gotten to that arc in One Piece? Like, freaking come on. Like, we've been on Wano forever, but granted, we've been on the Cake Island arc on in One Piece for freaking ever, for like a year and a half. Anyways, going back to Final Fantasy VII Remake, um, yeah, I was basically, like I said, basically playing the game like a like Final Fantasy XV, like a hack and slash game, but I, it wasn't until later in the game, like, okay, chip damage, let me use everything in my arsenal. This enemy is weak against this thing, uh, this, uh, this magic ability this sword this ability all right tifa uh you gonna get my bag you come in and and, and you know clean enemies up barrett uh you uh he, he, i think barrett was my healer throughout the game like barrett you be our healer you stay back and whatnot and then when Aerif came along okay, i'm like okay she's gonna be my healer and, and while barrett tifa and cloud is gonna be my frontal uh frontal assault team and whatnot i'm like okay once i wrap my brain around that concept i'm like okay i'm liking the gameplay a lot more even though i still don't like the chip based damage too much i do prefer input damage life found fancy 15 and keeping hearts 3 type gameplay but you know surely but uh, slowly but surely i like i said i i've came to understanding uh understand uh the gameplay the characters oh my goodness freaking i i wish it was a final fantasy 7 remake anime like jesus these characters are so freaking awesome like cloud badass hot boy coming in that everyone loves and whatnot uh freaking we have the the big home 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 me barrett he's really funny and i understand his passion and the stuff he's doing um i forgot jess's friends and whatnot and plus we have waifu bay tifa and Aerith. like boy cloud you can't choose between the two okay i'll choose for you jess you done freaking screen is did my girl jess dirty like come on now and i don't know what that ending of final fantasy 7 remake means i don't know it, it's freaking freaking crisis core ultimate di alternate dimensions and whatnot but bring my home girl jess back she was third see for cloud and like we all are and still are like boy oh boy but yeah final fantasy 7 remake ladies and gents a, a really great game i'm i'm pleasantly surprised hopefully it comes to pc and well i think it is coming to pc soon i think sometime in 2021 but hopefully it comes to xbox the xbox platforms in 2021 and hopefully maybe when are we getting final fantasy 7 remake 
2 part 2 like what sometime in probably 2022 because is it square enix they're also working on final fantasy 16 so that which looks awesome as well so yeah um final fantasy 7 remake ladies and gents awesome characters gameplay even though i didn't like it at first i came to like it like it even though overall i still don't like the chip based stuff the uh characters i love the story engaging interesting i i like it as well the the main bad guy uh, uh sephiroth and whatnot like the music so freaking good god, god i still can't think of the freaking big monster's name the freaking the gods the celestials or whatever um anyways yeah final fantasy uh third uh, excuse me final fantasy 7 remake ladies and gents number three on my list Let's get this over with. Sorry. Really? Against all the evil that hell can conjure. All the wickedness that mankind can produce. We will send unto them only you. Rip and tear. Until it is done. Coming in at number two, ladies and gents, rip and freaking tear mother effing doom eternal boy how much i love this game like sure the story is whatever it's a straightforward freaking you're the doom guy kill all demons kill all the devils kill them all all right freaking cool very straightforward but where this game shines the most is its masterpiece quality uh gameplay like i think i personally think it's a step above from doom 2016 i know i've seen some people over the inner webs and outer webs say that uh doom 2016 uh, felt more special probably because it came out of nowhere but I personally think that Doom Doom Eternal is a fantastic amazing freaking game when it comes to gameplay like it is probably my favorite favorite feeling first person shooter like it's definitely in my top five like it's up there with uh, it's up there with what like Wolfenstein uh, New Colossus Halo 5 uh, the Call of Duty games are really fun to play Titanfall 2 like Bora Boy id Software they really knocked out the part plus i really do think the level design is really cool uh in the game i do another thing that pe a lot of people complain about but i think it adds to a lot of versatility instead of it just being straightforward of uh, going to point a to point b it's more like point a point b and like a b point five or b point c nope that wouldn't have made sense so yeah let's go with b point five <laughs> that makes a little bit more sense probably not 2.5 makes more sense but yeah gameplay such an excellent thing i do like the added versatility to your arsenal of doing the dashes that adds more elements to to for your ripping and tearing gameplay style uh, definitely with the flame belch and i was about to say grenades but grenades were in doom 2016 haven't played in a while so yeah i kind of forgot about that part plus, plus the new arsenals so some of your new weapons my favorite favorite new weapon in doom uh, 2016 uh, excuse me doom eternal is basically it's the upgraded plasma rifle or plasma beam or whatever you want to call it i do like that and switch it to the God, it's not the microwave secondary fire fire uh, thing. It's the thing that does like the burst, and you you can instantly like destroy enemies. Like God, that is so fun to use. Plus, I love the takedowns of the game. Freaking gory, super messed up. God, I I, I just I, I I love it. Bosses of the game, pleasantly surprised. Even though I the final boss, not the final boss, the second to the last boss, the cod maker was a pain in the ass. But the, my favorite boss was uh, when that song hits. Uh, not the marauder which the the boss the, jesus christ like thank you twitter uh and someone who replied to ice t's tweet about those marauders uh mar marauder fights um many months ago about hey if you use uh if you use the god if you use the super shoddy uh no you use the freaking god the the, the ballista i think you use the ballista this switch to your super shoddy then ballista again and you'll kill them a lot quickly i'm like oh okay and i did that my like, huh i still freaking miss a couple of my shots there but it does help a lot it does help a lot but i do like the gladiator boss fight i think that's his name uh that boss fight with the music hicks oh my goodness and the music in this game freaking it, it's on another level it's so freaking awesome like like i hop in like every i'm not gonna lie i do hop in doom eternal like every 
few weeks just to mess around with just kill demons and just balance because the gameplay is just so fun and so amazing and just mwah, like I just cannot wait for more Doom Eternal. I did do a walk of um, the Ancient Gods Part 1 uh, a few months ago I think and I cannot wait for Part 2 in 2021. So yeah, Doom Eternal Lazy Jits number 2 on my list. And for my game of the year for 2020, Ori and the Will of the Wisp. Man, I'm just, let me just get, it is a masterpiece. This is games at 10 out of 10. Despite, I know at launch, I know the uh, Moon Studios, the developers behind this game already fixed the, this problem. I know it had some technical issues and I, 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 de I definitely ran into them. Like if you load up the map, the map is popping up slow. And when you get out the map, the, the game starts to chug a little bit. But man, I really do forgive that part because boy, this game, Game, it hits it, it's emotion i'm gonna try my hardest not to cry throughout the, throughout this part of my top 10 list ladies and gents because it's they got about the story i'm like it's it's awesome it's beautiful like the music beautiful heartwarming touching it, it makes you feel heroic at, at times and, and, and other times it make you it makes you feel sadness and whatnot for a lot of the characters like shriek uh the characters oh man i love ku like i love ori like the ultimate sacrifice that he has to make to become more to save this world the other characters their sacrifices their moments and whatnot the gameplay like i'm usually not into 2d platformers i, I never play these types of games any games like platformers these 2d 2d with puzzle stuff mechanics and whatnot like i usually don't play this play these type of games but seeing a lot of the gameplay footage and this game is just drop dead gorgeous i'm just like man i i have to like i owe it to myself to do this because i mean i couldn't get past like the first five minutes of blind forest because i kept crying like a little baby me, but it's goodness gracious though that really got me and towards the end of this game like the last 20 minutes of this game i'm just bawling like a freaking child who who you just stole his eggnog away with his xbox like oh my goodness like it's it's this game is a masterpiece ladies and gents i'm trying not to spoil the story i mean the only thing this is not a nitpick or a problem the only thing i wish i could ask the developers is i wish i i want to know why they decided that fate for shriek the main villain of the game because she is a great character her, her motivation is you're understanding where she's coming from but how she ends her story her arc i'm just like oh man that's like when i saw that scene i'm like all right this is where the waterworks happen and i'm like oh yep i am crying right now it's oh my god i'm about to cry right now i was just thinking about it. like it's it's really good like it's really good and like i said ori's ultimate sacrifice and whatnot it's or in the will of the west ladies and gents is a special game it's awesome it's a masterpiece it's i don't know how many freaking high praise i could give this game like i said i don't usually play this game like i just been thinking about this game ever since i played the game and back in march when i beat the game and throughout 2020 it has always been my game of the year if that's the thing it has never moved from my number one spot that's after playing cyberpunk ghost of shima spider-man miles morales last of us part two playing the all these other amazing great games nope or in the will of the west always stayed at number one and that's just huh, 
boy i cannot wait to see what moon studios does next and boy just or in the will of the west ladies and gents a masterpiece game i highly recommend you give it a try and play it it's such an amazing game so yeah my game of the year for 2020 ori and the will of the wisp So, what do you guys think about my list? You guys hate it, you love it, or you feel a little bit different of it? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below, tell me what's your top 10 games of 2020, or top five, or top three, or top A, or whoever who not. I wanna know what's your top game of 2020. Let me know in the comment section down below as well. Because like I said, 2020 has been an amazing banger year for video games, and hopefully 2021 it will follow suit. I mean, what, we have Hitman 3, uh, we have Halo Infinite, which is my most anticipated game of 2020. 21 presumably the next god of war game god of war ragnaron horizon uh forbidden west is supposed to come out uh, in 2021 new ratchet clank game i uh, know don't laugh me out of the room but i am a huge call of duty fan i'm very interested to see what call of duty 2021 looks like and upon a plethora and plethora of video games so yeah uh i cannot wait to see what microsoft has up their sleeves sony uh, uh nintendo the third parties from ea and ubisoft like let's just I oh, got video games. Video games are so freaking cool, ladies and gents. They're so awesome. I uh, cannot wait to see what 2020 has in store for us for video games. Um, so yeah, uh, this is my last video of 2020, and Cyberpunk 2077 was my last walkthrough of 2020 as well. Um, ladies and gents, thank you all for watching this, and thank you all for joining me for this video. Um, I'm trying not to tear it right now, but thank you all for the overwhelming love and support on my channel for the for all of 2020, on my walkthroughs for 2020. My much appreciated. We're going even harder, even stronger in 2021. I'm coming back January 5th, 2021 with a brand new walkthrough. It's most likely most likely going to be Ghost Runner. I need to do a walkthrough of that because I've been looking forward to that game. Then after Ghost Runner, we're going to be heading into Demon's Souls Remake, which Demon's Souls would have been on my top 10 games for 2020, but I didn't have the time to um, to play it because I was busy with other watches like Miles Morales and Assassin's Creed Valhalla and whatnot. So yeah, uh, we're going to be going even stronger in 2021 so make sure you're subscribed you're subscribed have that notification bell turned on and make sure you set notifications to all so you start receiving all my video post updates all my live stream uh posts and all my channel updates and all that good jazz ladies and gents um yeah like i said thank you all for the love and support on my channel throughout 2020 much appreciated guys it guys and gals like, it means the world to me so yeah thank you so much um so yeah with all that being said i'm gonna end the video before i start crying spill my heart out to you guys um, before I let you guys all go, if you guys could please leave a like on this video, if you guys like what you saw, please subscribe for more content. It helps about the channel a lot. Also, when you do subscribe, make sure you click that little bell next to the subscribe button so you can start receiving notifications when I post videos or go live with the live stream next time. Um, please share my channel and my videos to all your friends, family, cats and dogs, and whoever who nots. And you guys can all follow me on Twitter at beta, B-A-Y-T-U-H. If you want to support me even further than just subscribing to my YouTube channel, leaving a like, uh, sharing my channel and my videos to all your friends and families please consider donating some of your extra monies you have lying around to my patreon and or paypal that is patreon.com slash beta b-a-y-t-u-h and or paypal.me slash beta b-a-y-t-u-h you do not have to do uh do not have to do either of those that's 100 optional but please note ladies and gents any and all donations are much appreciated and with all that being said for the final time for 2020 ladies and gents my name is malcolm also known as beta i will catch you guys all in 2021 Please be safe, please be careful, be healthy, and have a great, happy holiday season, or something like that. <laughs> Peace. Catch you guys next time.